Well, hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist. I work in all kinds of mediums at all kinds of sizes, all kinds of subjects, and I help people of all levels of art. So whoever you are and whatever you make, you're welcome here on my channel. So subscribe if you like this video and you want to get more. Today, I want to talk about perspective. It's one of those things that a lot of artists just hate thinking about because the only picture that you have in your mind is those diagrams where you take a box and you hold it at a certain angle and you have to find the vanishing points, you have to find the horizon line and figure out where vertical is. And it, it can seem very daunting and your eyes can glaze over. And if you limit thinking about perspective as thinking about that, just all those lines and boxes, then I wanna change your mind in this video today because I want to talk about perspective in nature not just objects that are man-made but in nature how do we do something like add a path in a picture that we're making whether it's a giant painting or a big drawing or a sketch in your sketchbook or a card that you're making you're just putting a scene in it whatever it is if it has perspective that's just a little bit off then your whole picture can feel off. And you might even wonder, gee whiz, my thing doesn't look very good. I don't know why. Generally, it's gonna be perspective. And today I wanna talk about perspective in nature because nature doesn't have all of those hard edges. It employs those concepts. So if you do understand all of the perspective, then you can apply it to things you see in front of you if you go outside and sketch. But today I want to talk in simple terms about paths, paths and roads, because those are one of the things that's very easy to add to a scene, but it's also easy to wreck it and make it feel like you're in a fun house of some kind. And if you don't know how to fix that, then you're not able to achieve what you want as an artist. So I want to show you some photography I've taken some photographs and manipulated them to make them into kind of the crazy fun house thing that we sometimes do to show you why learning perspective is important. You don't have to understand where the horizon line is or where the vanishing points are if you learn to see. And that's what I hope I'm going to help you with today. Let's start by looking at this photo that has some elements that people would normally recognize as being in perspective because there are things that are closer to you and things that are further away and they get bigger and they get smaller. And in nature, you sometimes have elements like that, but we think of them in terms of structural types of elements more often. And in a photograph like this, you would think, okay, I'm going to draw you know, these bigger and these smaller. But this is not the original photograph. Let me show you what the original photo was, which is this. Some of the things that I changed in it, which is something I see often, is for one, that this piling is supposed to be taller than this. When this gets shortened, whether by accident or on purpose, the pilings look less impressive. They look less big. And if you keep them the way they actually are, you're going to give the viewer the impression they are right up against this. It's taller than they are. But another thing that got changed in this was these got moved down. When you short your perspective this way by either cutting elements out, chopping them off, or adapting them like this, you're changing the place where the viewer is standing. And let me show you a different example that'll show you that a little bit better. A photo like this is very simple. It's got a road, the same kind of an idea that those pilings were. They get smaller in the distance and bigger in the foreground. The stuff on the bottom gets lower and the stuff on the top, if you had another, you know, if, if there were fence posts here, you might have another triangle up top so that you'd have some perspective here. We don't really have much of that. We do have a little bit of fence line here, which also points to that same place. Well, 
If you were to take a picture like this and decide you were going to do something to it, you could change that. And sometimes changing it is good, sometimes it's not. This would be a way to change it so that the road is less important and skinnier, but it also changes your perspective. In this view, as opposed to the, the main actual photograph, it feels more like you're higher up, like you're sitting in the cab of a vehicle and looking down on the road because you're getting a different sense of perspective. And when the road is wider, it feels like you're standing on the road and you're getting a different view. You could change it even further and instead of going skinnier, you could go completely wide. And this makes it almost look like you're sitting on your butt on the ground on the road because you've lowered the perspective. And a lot of times when you start working with perspective and you don't get it quite right, this is one of the bigger problems is trying to figure out where you're standing in relation to whatever it is that you're drawing or painting. All right, in a reference like this, if this were a painting and the person was really loving the mountains and the hillsides and the grasses and the greens and everything, and well, there's this road thing in the middle, so they just kind of plopped a rectangle that gets a little skinnier as it goes off in the distance, maybe get some of those soft grasses along the edge of the road. And here, one of the things that's bothersome in this is that this edge right here just stops. And it looks like this is all a hill that goes up, 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 and then it crashes down on the other side and maybe there's a road going out here somewhere. And that would also mean that you would have to do something with this hillside. So that hillside also looks like it goes down on the other side. So if you're going to adapt something from your original reference or from the scene you see in front of you, you'd have to think about that. I'll show you the original photo. This is a very different road than that one. It's got a really nice edge to it, like all these little little places where the, the rocks and the grasses meet. It gets skinnier here. And if we zoom way in, we can see, oops, maybe too far in, but you can see that it curves around a little bit. There is a curve here, but the curve is hidden partially in this backside by a little pile of bushes and grasses. So that road goes back here somewhere. We don't know where it ends up. There's nowhere you can see that the road goes, but it goes back there somewhere behind all of that. And that's something to keep in mind. Do you want to tell your audience where that road goes to? So you can do something like simplify it and just put a clunky road in there, or you can follow the real road. Now, something I would do with this scene I don't tend to like things that have just a road in the middle of the picture. I like things that are a bit more off-centered. I think it looks better to me. And this one also looks like maybe you're up a little bit higher. I want to lower the perspective. And I can do that by extending the foreground portion of the road and make that bigger. So there's a bigger difference between where I'm standing and those things off in the distance. And this, this is just what I would do. There are some other people who have painted and sketched this, and I want to show you their work. I'm not going to be critiquing it or anything. I think they did a fine job. But on Paint My Photo, when you download pictures, so this is the original photograph, just a screenshot of that page. Down below, if you paint something, then use the, the link, and there's instructions in the FAQ how to do that. And then you can see all kinds of other options for what other people have done with a particular reference. And I'm going to look at these real quick for one reason. Look at the shape of this road right here. And then we're going to look at the shape that other people chose to do for that road. This one has a much longer trajectory from the foreground into where the road gets skinny. And you could click through this and go actually look at their painting and see more of it. I'll leave a link in the doobly-doo. This one has a curve to it. Remember we had that little curve, but they didn't include where the bushes come up over it so that that road can disappear. So it has a different feeling for where that road goes and it, it almost kind of goes uphill a little bit. This one goes around and almost goes like, like it, there's a uphill and then down. So it's changed 
what was in the photo reference, not that that's bad, but it has done something different with it. And sometimes you can do something different with it and it looks much better and sometimes not. And it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to look at your perspective and see if you can get it closer to reality or whether you've chosen to deliberately change the perspective to a different view. So here's another photograph with a path in it. This is a concrete path that just goes around, a, I guess, a park of some kind. And this is how I've seen many a person. I didn't see anybody on Paint My Photo that did this, but I've seen many a person take this tact on a road, which is... It is a man-made structure. It is going to be the same all the way along. It's going to be the same width. And this is how a lot of people will try to render it. They might do a great job on the trees and the grass and everything else, but on the road, they just know in their brain, their brain tells them this road is just as wide here as it is right here because we've been in parks like this before. But what is actually there is not that. What's actually there is a real change in a wide perspective here. It gets very skinny because this is a hill. Remember we talked about that, that little hillside idea. And then th this part of the road is actually going down here and then meeting up with that. That's what's happening. There's a hill there. We're not seeing a portion of the road there. And th that means this portion is going to be very skinny. But then from here up for that whole, almost that whole hillside, we're going to have about the same width. It's not going to consistently get skinny. But then when it hits this portion and it's really going off in the distance, that hillside is flattening up here. We're getting to a plateau. And in the plateau, this all turns into a point on this side. But that road ends at the same place as the horizon. So anytime you're looking at any kind of a scene, don't just normally tell yourself in your brain, this is a road and it's all going to be the same width. I just know that because I know what I know. Look at what you actually see in front of you and don't just interpret out of your brain. So here's another one that has a, a path in it. I've seen tons of these in watercolors, especially where, you know, we want to throw the path in there. We just kind of throw a line in. We do a great job on the trees, but the path is in, in oversight. And this path could destroy your painting because it doesn't look right. There's something that looks wrong. Like this, this makes it look like this angle makes it look like this road is at a precipitous angle. It, like this would be a, maybe difficult to walk on because it's really going downhill. Well, what did the original look like? It was this, which looks much more pleasant to walk on a very normal curve and it's going to go downhill, but not that drastically. And what I've noticed is that finding the horizontal, finding what that angle is, is the most difficult part for most people who are doing sketching and drawing and painting because we're not used to thinking in, in those kind of terms. This is almost exactly horizontal and this, you know, this has its own angle. If I were outside and trying to sketch this and I wanted to get it correct, I hold my pencil up against that curve, against that curve, that angle, that edge, whatever it is. And I would look to see, is that horizontal? And, you know, that w holding my pencil up will tell me that because if it tips a little bit, then I'll know that. And if the, the road does tip and it's kitty wampus like this, then I will be able to figure that out. So let's look at one more photograph and talk about this one. I photo, photoshopped uh, a path in here, the end of this path. The foreground portion is wider. The middle portion gets skinnier, but then it gets wider out here again. Watch for that because when it gets wider again, sometimes it's because the path is wider, but most of the time it's just because we weren't paying attention. So with that, uh, let's take that away and look at some things that we could do with a path like this. This one has beautiful rocks all the way up. It's not just rocks right in here. So including those would be helpful, but something happens in this portion of the path that can make your painting and your drawing much more interesting. Maybe you're not gonna put a dog in yours, but you can put 
flowers or grasses or something that break into the path. These flowers are in front of the path. And it's going to give it dimension just because these are in front of that. And in the, the other version, if those are taken out, the path just looks very boring. And you end up with having to figure out what to do with those edges of the path. Whereas if you can remove some of that by adding greenery that covers up part of the path, then you're going to end up with something that looks more interesting. And let's take a little bit of a look here at what's going on with this road. It is going to curve left. It's not curving like with this, you know, kind of horizontal here. It's turning. And we can indicate that by letting the road turn, but again, putting this bush in front of it. So we're cutting off a portion of that, even though we're indicating with a little curve that that road is going to go off to the left. So that's kind of my assessment of a couple of photos that I thought might help in explaining how to use a path in perspective in your paintings and drawings. I hope this video was helpful in showing you through photographs the importance of perspective. And if you learn how to actually see perspective and to see the relationship between lines, when is something horizontal? When is it a little off horizontal? What are the angles that a road is at? If you learn to see those things with your eyeballs, you don't have to learn all of the perspective lines and deal with all the horizon lines and the vanishing points. You don't have to think about any of that if you see with your eyes. So for some of you, it might be helpful to take a class in perspective and learn that. For others, just practice really seeing looking with your eyes and assessing the angles of all the parts of your landscape. Now in my next video, I'm going to show you an example of how to take a picture that you've drawn and you want to put a road or, a, you know, some kind of distant landscape in it. How do you get that right when you don't have a photograph in front of you? And we're going to talk about that. So make sure you come on back, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and go create something every day. Bye-bye now.